Six o'clock, we'll call a meeting to order, entertain a motion to approve the October 24th, 2023 regular select board meeting minutes. Cool. Second. Any discussion about the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Four. Oh. There's going to be um, additions to new business. A common request for the pumpkin festival next year. Um, uh, HP Fairfield uh, payment issue. And uh, the last new business is Liz Mount Eliza Martin tax penalty issue. All right, members of the public. We have anybody that need, wishes to speak about something first? You usually do. Um, you're about the common use policy again. Yeah, don't worry about it's it. Still in forevermore. Yeah, it's it's still in. It's been trimmed down, but it's still in stages. Hey, if you get it before spring, you'll be lucky at this point. Well, it doesn't exist anyway, so. <laughs> it's like all right, so. We'll move on to correspondence. Is there any of that? Okay. Warr uh, warrants. Go ahead, Katie. I'd like to make a motion to pay the warrants. Payroll in the amount of eleven thousand four hundred and seventy-six dollars and nineteen cents. Payroll taxes in the amount of four thousand nine hundred and fourteen dollars and eighty-seven cents. General fund in the amount of two hundred and sixty-three dollars and ninety-nine cents. General fund in the amount of $7,691.57. Highway in the amount of $120,926.64. Highway equipment in the amount of $20,749.33 for a total of $166,022.59. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, cool. Oh. All right. Jeremy, you have the floor. What would you like to know? Well, first off, how are you doing with the project? Then we'll go into the real meat of it. All right, we're good. We're getting caught up finally. Uh, we're fully staffed again after Zach's vacation. Um, Trying to button up a bunch of small stuff right now. You know, stuff like getting this pump pulled from the fountain and benches picked up this week. Okay. We're that, we're just plugging along with what we can. We get a few more culverts I want to try to get replaced before it freezes. So, the West Hill project is, they are out of towns and now they're just doing cleanup up through there. Um, they will be working this Saturday, but they will not be closing the road. They're just doing some of the cabinets and the stuff above ground stuff. So hopefully within the next week or two, they'll be completely out of our hair. Okay. Any questions for Jeremy about those things? Yeltsin? I've been on it like a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let's start into the, what we need to face. Um, why don't we start with the backhoe? So we're skipping to um, newer old business? Well, just a highway report. She had another new business replacing the backhoe. Okay, we can do that. Do that. Treasure is your book. Skip on the list. I always get caught when I skip on the list. All right, so MT Bank, the sheet that they provide us uh, monthly or whenever Elaine runs it for the municipal fund is $1,264,103.64. Uh, 
and the usual $30,000 in the checking account. The true fund balance that we have operationally at this point is for $129,000. $94.39. And let's see. And the town clerk's counter funds $801.90. Treasurers, clerks, I have nothing extra. Um, we're on to filling the board vacancy. Um, Nick, who's Nick? Hi, Nick. Hello. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself and what you do and sure. how long you've been around. Sure. Uh, so my name is Nick Suarez. Uh, I and my partner Kyle, we moved here from Atlanta, Georgia, just about a year ago now. Um, and I am remote, working remotely um, for the CDC. Um, and yeah, just thought it would be a good way to kind of get involved, help out with the town. Um, so just, yeah. I don't know. Did you, do you want me to like read? What I said. No, we've got we that. We're right there. Yeah, yeah. More interested in, you know, who we are, yeah. what you do, um, what availability you'll have for us because we meet, you know, twice a month. Mm -hmm. um, and the being as you work for the federal government, the likelihood that they're not going to take you and say, hey, you need to be down here and you'll have to move again. Yeah. Just makes it. Sure. So I am. Fully remote, 100%. Um, so there is kind of no mandate that they can, well, other than an act of Congress, which would be really specific. Um, but otherwise, there's kind of no mandate that I would have to come back to Atlanta at any point. Um, and I generally am done by 4 or 4.30 um, weekdays. Um, pretty available, pretty flexible. Um, if you know anything comes up during the daytime, um, have pretty good flexibility to move things around. Um, and yeah, I just kind of have some experience working with contracts, um, government contracts, um, taking a look at financial reports and budgets and stuff, so. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Go ahead. How many people actually expressed interest in being on the select board? Great. Are they all here tonight? Two are here, one is on the it's on Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Okay. How did the board have any questions for Nick? I've got a question. Who's that? This is Rob Swiger. Oh good lord, I could, you could hardly understand you there for a minute. Go ahead. Rob. Is, it, is it very clear? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, hi Nick and Kyle. Really glad to see you guys here. Um, Nick, I'm wondering, do you have any experience working with municipal government? Um, so where I work, I work directly, or not directly, but I work primarily with schools and school districts. So kind of in that realm of working with uh, kind of local public run organizations. I'm really familiar with, um, with schools and education departments. Um, I don't have kind of any direct experience working with like public health departments or kind of local government. Um, yeah. Great, okay. All right. Any further, anything further? Okay. Next one we'll go with H Haley. Hey, Haley. Hi. How are you? Nick sounds like a great candidate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I grew up in the area, as you know, I was on the select board for a year, um, and that is my only municipal experience. Um, my availability is open in the evenings on the days that you all meet. So I'd be happy to serve the community again. Um, it's always great to see new faces. So, yeah. Any questions for you? Rob? 
I'm just really excited to see so many people show up for this board seat. That's all I have to say. Okay. All right. If there's no other questions for Haley, we'll go ahead. Uh, what happened before? Did you just, why did you stay on for longer than? It was a one year position okay. and other people were running and I was ready to step away at that time. Yeah. yeah. And this is only until March. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so you're not full committed year. to kind of like going for it again after this, this is like just an interim thing for you? Um, as far as you? Probably. Yeah. Probably just to like fill out this, this seat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And if I remember right, that particular year was a rather interesting one. There's a lot of stuff that was kind of thrown at us all at once. Yeah, so, and we started out on Zoom. Yeah. Only Zoom. And then moved it back to in person. Yeah. Okay. Now the next one we have is. It's Kate. There you go, thank you. And she is off mute and ready to. Kate, go ahead. Hi, um, both Nick and Haley sound like the whole candidates too. So I'm glad that there's more than, glad that there's this interest. Uh, I'm retired. I moved to Townsend and purchased property um, about two, a little over a year ago, I retired after 20 years of being uh, a provost at a science and engineering university out in South Dakota. I have, um, as, a, as associate provost and then provost, I did just about everything from budgets to strategic planning to, to uh, government relationships to, <laughs> to uh, uh, single shooter uh, exercises. <laughs> I just did everything. Um, my degrees aren't in administration, they're in literature and history, but I'm educated and I'm available. And I'm, since I've moved to Townsend, I've tried every way I could to get involved in the community. I started up book clubs at the library and at the Battle Cares facility. And I write for the Townsend newsletter and edit the Historical Society newsletter. All of this I mentioned in my letter. so. Just, I'm sort of repeating myself, but uh, I bring, I believe, uh, a focused attention and a lot of experience and a lot of goodwill to the position. I would be interested if it's a good fit and if I serve well, I would be interested in running for a seat uh, come the expiration of the temporary appointment. Well, I would hope uh anybody here that's put in for this position would consider running um, in the next election. And I think Haley said it when she left before, and she just said it here, having diversity is a good thing. So um, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Um, since we don't fill these positions often, thankfully, um, I'm going to ask the board whether they want to have a meeting afterwards to discuss this, or are they in favor of making a nomination and voting now? I'd like to have a discussion afterwards. And okay, do you want to have a deliberate, or do you want to have an executive session? Probably executive is easiest. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, do you feel that there will be a decision tonight? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll discuss this in executive se uh, session after the regular meeting, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Okay. All right. You'll contact us. What's that? You'll contact us or call me. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Thank okay. you for letting me zoom in from California. <laughs> no problem. Um, hey, and we actually do have an executive session listed on the warning, so we're good stead there. Um, okay.
So let's do it that way. Okay, under new businesses, Jeremy's up again with the backhoe. Thank you. Yeah, you don't have to leave. <laughs> um, Connie and I put together a proposal for replacing the backhoe. Uh, as most of you know, we've kind of gone in a different direction. Um, I have a price on replacing the backhoe, but my thought is if we're going to spend the money on something, we should probably get what we actually need. And because if we don't, it'll be four or five years down the road before we can actually get what we need. And then we're going to be right back in the same situation with the backhoe because, you know, it, it's not the machine for what we do. Um, so I have, I mean, I have one, I have a couple of prices on some different machines. I'm still waiting on some stuff. So. Well, why don't we start, Jeremy, with what's wrong with what we've that's a, that's a good place to start. Okay. So the backhoe has 7,200 hours on it, roughly. Um, I just got an estimate from Nortrax or United Construct Ag and Turf to completely go through the whole thing, replace buckets and pins and bushings and hydraulic cylinders and replace hydraulic lines. And it was a substantial amount of money. Over 30% of what the cost of replacing it would be. Um, so there's, that's where I'm at with that. Is it safe to operate? At the present time, it is not. Uh, does not have a parking brake on it. Um, that portion of it is a little under eight grand to fix. My thought is if we do decide to go with an excavator or wheel excavator, that we get that fixed, keep the backhoe for emergency purposes only and deal with it down the road when it becomes really unusable. So. Okay. So, the, I guess I'm, I'm not understanding because I thought that the backhoe was close to, if we were to do everything, yeah. all the pins, all the bushings, repack all the cylinders. Right now it's in working condition, but it's a tired working condition, very rough shape. Okay. So if, if we were to go with the, the other machine, it would rarely get used except for in emergency situations. And really for that to happen, we just need to have the brakes fixed. Um, everything else can just be the way it is for now and then you know until well if we use it to finance or not finance purchase the other one used it as a uh, trade better thing what would we do how would we do in that well initially United was going to give us 24,000 for it I don't know what other companies would give us. They'd have to, I'd have to have them come and look at it. And so it may or may not be worth it to have the trade in, to do the trade in. Um, again, that's up to them really. Okay, so what do you want to do? What is it you're looking at doing? Well, my thought is, we, if we're going to get the, a new piece of wood, we should get the one that we really need. It would be more efficient for the town. Uh, so, I would like to go forward with looking into purchasing an excavator, whether it be wheeled or tracked. I'm still trying to weigh that option. What's better, wheeled? You don't have to buy a trailer. It's one less piece of equipment you got to maintain. And it does, they get around just as quick as a backhoe. So my thought for keeping the backhoe was in case the loader goes down, we still have a way to load trucks in the winter time. How's the loader? The loader's in good shape, but you know, you just never know. Yeah. Especially with these newer equipment, all the electronics and stuff in them, they're just unpredictable. 
Anybody got any questions for Jeremy about this? Thoughts? I mean, my only thought would be come up with some prices on, like you were saying, with the tract compared to the wheel. Yeah, I so, just, sizes, you know. As far as tract and wheel, it is a pretty substantial amount of money difference because it's, you know, but I'd have to get prices, you know, when you get a track machine, you have to have a trailer. So there's, I think in the long run, it balance out. Um, you know, like I said, having the trailer, it's one more piece of equipment in the fleet you gotta maintain rather than just the excavator itself. So. What do we have that could pull it? Any one of our trucks could pull it. We just, oh, they didn't, Right now, none of our trucks are set up for air brakes, trailer air brakes, so we'd have to have one or two of them set up, which I don't think would be a major cost, just having it go to Catamount or wherever, ATG or so. Okay. Well, why don't we do that? Why don't we, as Rob was saying, get some prices, figure out where we stand financially. I mean, I've got some ideas from where the money can come so that we don't have to finance it um, come from, so we don't have to finance it. But that's gonna take a little more exploration as well. So if we get a price tag, yeah. then we can move forward with it. I do have one price. I have a price on one track machine and one wheel right now. I'm still waiting for more. Okay. Well, what are those so we get a general? Uh, track machine is generally the one I priced out at North Tracks or uh, through John Deere is about right around 140, depending on what we do for attachments and stuff like that with it. Um, and a wheeled one through some company over admin over in Albany. It's a Wacker Newson was two two forty. So it's quite a bit difference, but that was if we depending on whether we do a trade or you know. Well, unless anybody else has any question about it, why don't you go move forward with getting the estimates and we'll figure it out from there. You also might want to see if you know that that what we were talking about about that mowing deck yeah. is by a lot of these newer either whether it's a track or wheeled machine you can get more heads for our mulching heads but the advantage to having the wheeled machine is you can actually use it as a roadside mower as well yeah well that's what i that's what i was thinking so is, i mean there's there's the damn thing every year right there's unlimited potential with these machines these days, they have so many different attachments you can get for different projects. Okay. So. All right. Anything further on that part? Jeremy, uh, Jeremy. Rob, any questions? No, no questions. I, I guess, um, I, I, will go. I do have a question. Um, I'm, I'm curious how uh, pertinent or time sensitive is getting this accomplished to you, Jeremy? Um, well, if we decide, it's, I mean, we're coming into the end of the, our busy season, so it's not really like, it doesn't really need to be done now. It's, if we're gonna go with an excavator, it can wait till spring or you know over the winter time so it's but if we are to i mean we have to make a decision on what we're doing as far as the backhoe because that does need some work if we're going to keep it to and have it be safe enough for us to use i have to schedule that work with you know so that it's done over the winter months because when we don't really use it so um we do have some time what do we have for leak time for picking it for Getting it. Uh, depends on the depends on the brand you go through. I know the the one on the Wacker one. I they, they had six in stock. So uh, I talked to a Volvo rep today. He's got one coming in in the spring, and I'm still waiting to hear from JCB. Uh, as far as the track machine goes, the one that he priced out for me, he had in stock at United. So it's. It depends on what you're getting and where you're getting it from. So. Okay. Anything that's, else? Yeah, that's, that's great information to have, especially as we're entering budget season. How, how do we 
know what we need in the future and how do we prioritize. So that's great. Thanks for bringing that up. Yep. Okay. And we've got one more thing to deal with, which is also on Jeremy's plate. And that is the $2,700 to HP Fairfield. Um, Jeremy has asked that we pay that bill because they're a significant um, partner, I guess you'd call it, in getting parts. And, uh, well, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, uh, they will not send me parts for some of my sanders because we owe them this money. Um, it was something that's the previous foreman wanted to get warranted. Um, so I don't really know what his thought process was behind that. But if we don't pay this and I do have a breakdown this winter, we're going to be screwed. So because they're the only dealership that deals Tenco right now around here within, I don't know, 300 miles, I think. So. Okay. I remember that conversation. Uh, it was like the warranty expired that day, day before, or something like that. Yeah. Well, they, he, he had it down as a certain number of months, mm -hmm. and it was uh, actually, there was supposed to be more of it, yeah. but the HP Fairfield said that it was damaged by neglect, so they, they weren't going to budge. Yes. So. I guess I'd entertain a motion to uh, pay this bill and get this off of our plate so we can move forward. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? Rob, do you have anything? I personally don't like whether it's with the town or in my personal business when I get stuck into a corner with somebody over something like this and it turns into a he said, she said type of game. And, you know, when it comes to a, a, a warranty, I mean, it should be right there on paper. And I don't know, maybe we can't read the paper quite right or whether they're giving us the long shank or whatever, but probably should get paid and move along. Okay. Rob, do you have anything? I'm with what Rob said. Um, this, this is a good example of, you know, just keeping good documents and making sure that our records are in place so that moving forward, we, we're not paying too much if we can help it. Yeah. All right. Um, all those in favor of uh, paying the HP Fairfield bill signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, opposed? Okay, 4 -0. Uh Please sign this along with the warrants so that we can direct Elaine to pay the bill. All um, Next thing we've got is a common use request. This is for the Pumpkin Festival, Leland, Leland and Gray, next year, October 19th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Apparently, they have a website for the Pumpkin Festival. Or no, that's the email address. Um, Did they give us insurance no. documents? No, the form was changed, um, and there's no insurance documentation. Um, and I haven't had time to e read this to see if it's got the elements that we need in it. It just, I mean, it has. It says that you're supposed to give it. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, they got plenty of time to get it to us. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, do we want to 
put this on the table and send them back proof for proof? Yes. Um, I think yes. we should, yeah. All right. Connie, would you see if you can touch base with them? I'm sure it's the school. It is. Um, but we still need it at least once a year. All right, so that's table. The last thing we have in the regular session is a tax issue. Um, we have a letter. Katie, why don't you read this letter into the record and then we'll decide okay. how we're going to go with it. Dear sirs and madam, I am writing regarding a penalty that was assessed for late filing of my homestead as exemption declaration on my tax bill in the amount of $480.01. I was unaware of my error filing until I received my tax bill in July and saw no prebate. In talking with a representative at the Vermont Department of Taxes, I learned that by filing online, which I have never done before, that I chose a wrong option which circumvented the applying for homestead exemption option. In speaking with state customer service representatives, I was finally able to file my exemption, which resulted in my receiving my prebate and which generated a new tax bill. It has taken until now, talking with reps in the State Department of Taxes, Townsend's Treasurer, and even the Lister's Office to learn from where and why I received this penalty. I am asking that I be forgiven the penalty as I have never filed late in 23 years and because the penalty has caused undue hardship. Respectfully submitted, Elizabeth Swen Martin. Thank you. So, I think we need to find out what our responsibilities are in this. It sounds to me like it's between her and the state of Vermont. Just listening to the, to the letter. Um, I'm not clear on who she owes the $480 award. To the town. To, to our town? It's, the term, it's a town penalty. Okay. The error was made at the state level. Well, the error was made by her, but it was at the state level, but the town is the one who puts the penalty out. Do we have information on that? Supposedly it happened when Act 60, the select board created this, when Act 60 went into effect, which is over 10 years. Well, why don't we see what we can find out? Because, again, it seems like this is her issue with the state of Vermont. If the, if the, the property or if the information wasn't correct, <laughs> assess this penalty, I don't know as we can take it away. The state doesn't assess it. It's a town penalty. Okay. So why don't we find is out? Is the town penalty for a late filing of or a homestead? Error, or error. Or error. Because it's. I was unclear in her letter if she felt like she was getting this penalty because she had made an error which made her then file it late after the fact. It's a little bit confusing. Is Helen on? Helen is on. Helen. Yes. Do you know anything about this? Yeah, the um, she filed, I think, like it, the next day, but it is the town penalty that she's asking to be waived. That has nothing to do with the state. And it, I don't remember what the percentage is that the state, that the town charges. Okay. But it is totally at the town level and it's, and it's nothing to do with the state anymore. Okay. Do you know where any documentation might be of that? Documentation as what kind? Well, probably back in high school about it. Oh, delinquent tax. Yes. All right, we'll try that. Delinquent <coughs> tax assessment. Um, I mean, she has filed her homestead declaration, and she's got her estate payment, as far as I know. <coughs> check with a link. Okay. But it is the penalty now that she's asking to be waived. And it's the town penalty, not the state. Okay. Helen, have you seen us um, apply this penalty in the past in your experience? I've never seen anybody request that it be waived. I, uh, Lane didn't even know that it was the town penalty until um, last week, I believe. Wow. Huh. 
Rob, have you yeah. had experience with waving? Well, I've seen people come in and had a board of civil authority meeting there one time about somebody wanting to erase penalties and stuff. And and we kind of got into the situation that if we start waiving the penalties, and this might be a totally different subject compared to what the Samaritan is dealing with, but we in that one we refer back to if we start waiving penalties for one, we have to start waiving penalties for all. And so it didn't fly. But what I would I would I don't know that there's ever been any penalties assessed by the town before. You'd have to check with Elaine to find out. I think you'd check with Becky first. She would be the one that would have. This sure. isn't a late tax. This is a late fee for filing the homestead declaration. Late. This has nothing to do with the late um, uh, property tax payments. All right. Well, regardless, we'll have to do some research to figure out where that came from um, and what we can do with it. So I, I would uh, suggest we table this one as well until we can get some answers to make an informed decision. Okay? Any problems? No, I agree. Okay. Rob? Agreed, I'd like more information. Okay. All right, so, um, entertain a motion to move from the regular meeting to executive session to discuss uh, filling the board vacancy. Sorry. All those in favor? No. Aye. 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 Thank you. We've come back out of executive session. It is 7.25. Uh, entertain a motion as to appointing a new member and who that member is. Oh, I guess. Or do you want me to make that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Haley Felker uh, to fill the three month position on the select board. Pleasure. Second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 4 0. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Moved. Okay. Thank you. Aye. Here we go. Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's it. Thank you.